In this video, see on electric field, we are going to be solving case two of the problem we attempted earlier on. Okay, now there is a C and a D in this case, so solve A and B on our previous video, and those ones are quite easy. Okay, now the distance given in this case in the coordinate of C space is 0 0.1, 0 0.15, um, 0, and then 0 0.1. Okay, first things first, we are going to draw our um, diagram on the board. Okay, so we are having our origin as 0, 0 as always. Um, the first coordinate is given. 0 0.1 and 0. So y is 0 still on this straight line and x is 0 0.1. So we have 0 0.1 here. And then we're having uh, minus 0 0.1 and 0. So y is 0 still on this um, straight line and then minus 0 0.1 means on the x-axis to the left. So you have 0 0.1 here. This is the negative x-axis and this is the positive x-axis. Okay? Now, in this case, I'm going to find the magnitude and direction of the electric field intensity at the following point, okay, we're going to start with this first one 0 0.1 comma 0 0.15. So 0 0.1 comma 0 0.15, how are we going to locate it in this diagram? Here is the center, this is like a graph to so the x axis to the um, sorry to the positive x axis to the negative x axis and then upward positive y downward negative y. Okay, so 0 0.1 is first of all on the x axis, so not from here to here 0 0.1 positive. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with this point. Okay, next thing we're going to trace it on the y axis. So we have what now? 0 0.15. So let's say this is the y axis. Let us say um, I'm having the y axis here. Okay, this is the origin. So we're having the positive y axis. So we have, we have to trace 0 0.15. Okay, so let's say we trace 0 0.15 to somewhere here. Okay, 0 0.15 is the distance to the y axis. So here's how to draw it. 0 0.1 on the x axis from here to here is 0 0.1. 0 0.15 to the y axis from here to here is 0 0.15. Okay, these diagrams are not drawn to scale, so uh, you might as well want to get a graph to do it all. You don't really need the graph because you're not asked to do any of this to scale. Okay, now you're asked to find the electric field intensity at this point. Okay, due to the two charge. Now you might remember we had a charge here. Um, Q2 and we had a charge here Q1 okay these are the initial char char charges given to us the question said in a coordinate um, in a rectangular coordinate system two positive point charges okay of 10 to the power of minus 8 okay so the two positive point charges are Q1 and Q2 values 10 to the power of what now minus 8 now if you are not following this I would like to at least watch our first video where we solve case 1 okay on um, this same question okay but it was slightly easier than this one okay now, this one is positive, this one is positive. You have to find the electric field strength at this point. Remember, it's the distance from that point or from that point to the electric um, charge that we are looking for or that we are dealing with rather. Okay? So, from here to here, we are going to need the distance. From here to here, we already have the distance, so we don't have to solve for anything. So, I'm going to draw in line from here down to this point. Okay? Of course, we can see that the line is having an angle. I'm going to call this angle alpha. There is a reason I'm calling this alpha because we're going to need it to solve. Okay? Now, when I come to this point, we're going to have the resultant electric field intensity here. Okay? Let's call this one Ex. This is on the fact that it's on the horizontal axis. I'm going to call this Ey because it's on the what now? Vertical axis. Okay? So, um, the next electric field will be given at as some electric field in this direction, okay, E. Now, this next electric field will also have an angle, which is theta, okay? It's going to have an angle theta. Now, for theta, it is not equal to alpha. Take notes. You might be thinking this straight line extends down to this E. No, I probably did it um, um, in this way, okay? Now, theta and alpha, they are not equal. Why? This is simply because the EY here does not only depend on charge Q1, but rather it depends on charge Q1 and charge Q2. It is only um, the EX here that is going to depend on charge Q1, simply because this one is what now? Vertical on a straight line. Here is the solution, okay? So the solution to this problem is simply to what now? Solve the vector force, um, the vector electric field intensity. So for E1, which is the electric field intensity of Q1 with respect to this distance, it is going to be equal to, remember, E is equal to um, KQ divided by R squared. So we know the value of K to be 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times, um, what is Q in this case? Q in this case is um, 
10 to the power of minus is given in the question divided by what is r r is the distance from here to here right so r is the distance from here to here and what is the distance from there to there we can calculate it here to here is 0 0.1 here to here is 0 0.1 so the total horizontal distance is 0 0.2 okay and then here to here is what now 0 0.15 so we can use the Pythagoras theorem to get here to here so for the distance it's going to be the square root of mirror or maybe the Pythagoras theorem 0 point here to here is 0 0.2 squared 0 0.15 squared okay and then there's a square in the arrow don't forget square okay now we are not done okay we are not done simply because q1 has an electric field that is inclined at an angle remember for vectors that are inclined as angles to the horizontal or the vertical we must always want to find the resultant force that is acting on the x and on the y axis so instead of writing q1 first i should write this as e um e one x okay which means for this q1 we're going to be having that of the what now the x axis okay now to do that we are going to what now resolve it to the horizontal component so it's going to be cosine of this angle cos what now alpha okay cosine of alpha so we're also what now resolving it to the what now to the x axis okay that's what we're going to do we're going to have everything here cosine of alpha now what will be cosine of alpha cosine of alpha um, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So here is adjacent 0 0.2. Remember, this from here to here 0 0.2, okay? Over hypotenuse, which is the same value we are having here, okay? I can just use to find the distance from here to here to make it easy instead of writing all this um, letting stuff. So let's call the distance from here to here, let's call it P. So from here to here, we're going to call it P. And we do know that P is equal to the square root of here to here, which is 0 0.2 or square plus here to here 0 0.15, 0 0.15 squared okay so p is equal to so the value of p is gonna be 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.15 squared okay and then the square root of it it's gonna give us 1 over 4 which is 1.25 so we have 0 0.25 okay so cos alpha is adjacent 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.25 so we can solve it as 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times 10 to the power of minus 8 over this square cancels this one okay so i left with 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.15 squared times cos alpha is adjacent right so you have 0 0.2 which is from here to here don't go and make the mistake of using 0 0.1 here to here is 0 0.1 here to here is 0 0.1 the total one is 0 0.2 okay divided by the upper one so you have 0 0.25 and we'll do this in the calculator we are going to get a final answer of um, 9 times 10 to the power of 9 times 10 to the power of minus 8 times 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.2 squared plus 0 0.15 squared um, times 0 0.25 in the bottom right so we're going to get a value of 1152 okay newtons per column for the x as is for this first one okay now we check for this one this one only has an electric field that is directed upward, okay? There is no inclination. So we don't have an x axis. We only have what, okay, we want now the y axis. So it means now, for the total system, the EX or the value or the next electric field acting on the horizontal is this value, okay? Now, to find the value of EY, okay? To find the value of EY, EY is going to be equal to E1Y plus e 2y now what does this mean e1y simply means the value of the electric field for charge one that is acting on the y axis e2y the value of the electric field for charge two that is acting on the what now on the y axis as well okay so to do that we are going to sum both and that will equal remember the formula of making this of is kq over r so we are going to get kq a mighty kq simply because they are having k to be constant yeah and then q is also what now constant 10 to the power of minus 8 so no need of um, writing it twice. So I have, we are going to um, have KQ divided by what is the distance? The distance for EY, okay, in this case, the distance for EY will be equal to um, Q1, okay, and the distance from here to here, okay, from here to here. That will be the distance for this point, yeah? So if e for this q1 is acting on this axis it simply means we are going to resolve whatever we're having here 
to the vertical or reserving whatever we're having here to the vertical. So from here to here, it's going to be resolved to the vertical. Okay, so the distance we made is 7, which is 0 0.25 like we calculated. We are going to have 0 0.25 squared. Okay, now we're resolving to the vertical. Okay, we're opening the angle, so I'm making use of sine. That will be sine of alpha plus. Now for ey, it's simply direct. Okay, straight. There's no need of resolving. It's simply straight. So I'm going to have um, kq kq divided by the distance from here to here, which is given as 0 0.15. So we have 0 0.15 squared. Okay, now solving that, I'm going to have EY to give us a value of um, KQ is constant, we can bring it out. So we have KQ, KQ into brackets, sine of alpha divided by 0 0.25 squared plus 1 over 0 0.15 squared okay so ey is equal to k is 9 times 10 to the power of 9 okay q is 10 to the power of minus 8 now what about sine alpha sine alpha is opposite by putting so is 0 0.15 over 0 0.25 okay so we have 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.25 squared plus 1 over 0 0.15 squared Okay, so EY will then be equal to 9 times 10 to the power of 9, okay, times 10 to the power of minus 8 times in brackets. Um, this will be 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.25 cube, right? 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.25 to the power of 3 plus 0 point, 0 0.1 or rather. Plus 1 divided by 0 0.15 squared. Okay. So I'm going to get the value for EY as 4864. Okay, that's what we're going to get for the value of EY. What will now be the net electric field intensity? So the net electric field intensity E will be equal to the square of the Pythagoras theorem EY squared plus ES squared. So we have EY squared plus EX squared. Now for EX, there is no EX for this, it's just this. So, can also represent it as E1x, okay? So, E will then be equal to the square root of what is EY? 4864 squared plus EX is um, 1152. So, we have 1152 squared, okay? And then um, we'll do that on our calculator. We're going to get um, square root of answer squared plus 1152 squared. That will give us the value of. 4998.56 newtons per coulomb. Okay, of course, this is what we're going to get. So, this will be the value of the net electric field at this point due to these two charges. Okay, what will be the direction? The direction in this case is what now? Theta. And theta is equal to tan inverse of what now? Um, EY over EX. So, it has opposite over adjacent. So, we have EY over EX. Okay, so have tan inverse shift tan ey in this case is 4864 divided by ex 499. Oh, rather, that's not ex. Ex is um 1152. Okay, I'm gonna get a value of theta which is equal to 76.7 degrees, which is approximately 77 degrees. Okay, that's the value of what now theta. I'm going to go over the whole thing again quickly. Okay, so first things first, to solve a problem like this, you have to draft out this diagram. So you might want to rewind the video to see how I um, drew this diagram. Now, to solve the problem, we know that at this point, we are going to have a um, horizontal electric field, okay, having an angle to the horizontal and to the vertical. And to solve the value of that electric field, we need the value of this one and the value of this one. Now, for this one, it's, going to, it's only going to put it an electric field in the vertical column that is on the y axis because it is not inclined. But since this one is inclined, we know it is inclined because from the diagram you can see it, okay? Since it is inclined, we are going to resolve it to the vertical and to the horizontal. This one only stays in the horizontal, okay? There is no, the, um, only stays in the vertical rather. There is no what now? Horizontal. Now, for this one, I resolve this to the horizontal. That was what I did here. E1x, resolving it to the horizontal using this angle. Cosine of alpha. What is the distance from here to here? You write it there, okay? I'm going to get value of this. 
Okay, I was supposed to add the value of this one too. Assuming this one had um, an inclination producing a horizontal what now electric field. So there is no resolution to the horizontal. It means what now? There is no result for horizontal coordinates for this one. I'm only having what now? One horizontal component, which is this. Okay? Now, for the vertical component, which is EY, we are going to add the vertical component that is produced by this um, charge 2 and the vertical component that is produced by what now? Charge 1. So on add both, this is what we are going to get. Now, for E1, Y, we are resolving this same one that we resolve to the horizontal, to the vertical in this case. Okay? So I'm just going to carry everything here and put sine alpha, okay, to resolve it to the vertical. That's what we're going to have here. Plus, for E2, this one is already what now? On the vertical, no resolution. Just use your normal formula, which is what now? E equals KQ over R squared. That's what we did here. Okay? From here, as we put in the values, KQ is common factorized. Put in the values and then we get the final answer of 4864 newtons per column. Okay? Now, to find the net electric field intensity, remember for the last theorem, look at this E, Y, E, X. This is E, O, one. Square root of this one's um, squared plus this one squared. That's what we're having here. Put it in your values and you get this, which is our correct answer. And then to find the value of the angle of inclination or the direction of the final electric field, remember it's a vector, we have to find it. That will be tan inverse of EY over EX, putting in your value for EY, which is um, this, and your value for EX, which is this, we're going to get a value of 77 degrees. So that is how it is being done. Now, um, I would not want to make this any longer as uh, you might need time to refresh your work. So in our next video, we're going to be attempting question D, okay, which is the coordinate of this space now is 0, 0, 0,1. So stay tuned in our next video, we're going to be attempting that and uh, do what you like if you did learn something from the video and drop a comment in the comment section if you have any questions to ask or a video you'd like me to talk about as well. Also do what you click on the notification bell so that when the next video is being uploaded, you get notified and you'll be one of the first few persons that get notified about the video. Okay, you can also find it in the playlist as well. And then again, um, we're talking about the other um, few concepts that will be coming next, still on electrostatic, electric fields and the likes. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.